Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Stem X Stitch. Today is March 4th, 2023, and this is floss tube number eight. As of today, I have stitched 161,215 stitches since I started stitching in 2020, and I have stitched 1,534 stitches since my last video. Thank you so much for joining me for another week, and I'm excited to just hop right into it with a um, monthly wrap-up for February. Um, so in February, I worked on three projects, two of which you've seen before, and one of which was a new start for me um, after my last video. And so in total in February, I will first show you my... Um, tracker for February. And so you can see which days I worked on which projects and some summary statistics for the month. Um, I worked on um, Heaven and Earth Designs Hidden Harbor, uh, Night Spirit Studios Unexpected Visitors, and my new start was a pattern called Luna Moth from Wild Bluebell Patterns. I spent 10 days on Hidden Harbor, 25 days on Unexpected Visitors, and two days on Luna Moth. I had one new start, which was Luna Moth, no finishes, and I stitched 27 out of 28 days in the month of February. In total, I did 10,483 stitches this month, which puts me at a total of 23,016 stitches for this year so far. I have six whips currently, um, and I have two finishes this year and 45 finishes um, since I started stitching. So that is my monthly wrap up for February. Um, in January, I did around 12,000 stitches that month, um, and this month only around 10,000, but given that it's about three days shorter, I think maybe that's not too surprising and, and seems like I'm kind of stitching at a similar rate anyway. So um, going into March, I had a lot of projects that were going to switch in and out. Um, and I had two new starts that I was planning. Oh, well, one was planned because it got called on my whip go. And that is uh, Ocean Wave by Zephyr Mood. I call this one Ocean Wave 341 because that's the pattern name. And there's also a few... Um, other patterns from Zephyr Mood that are also Ocean Wave patterns. Um, so I'll put a picture of that pattern here. This was called on my whip go this month with a goal of me getting a third of the way through it before the end of March. Um, and this was a new start so I don't have a picture from last time but this is where I am so far. Um, nothing uh, incredible to show yet. I'm only a hundred and five stitches in. I'm doing this on 18 count white Ada, two over one full cross with DMC. I started this on March 1st, 2023 and I, um, I am 1.1% complete. So this pattern has about, uh, 9,500 stitches in total, and I'm hoping to get a third of a, way, a third of the way through it this month. Um, so far, I've been working on this one on the bus. bus. I've never done um, a full coverage type piece like this on the bus before, so that's a little bit new. I actually took my tablet with me this time um, to see if that could help me stitch on the bus a little better, and it was pretty good. I, I haven't minded it so far, so um, this will probably stay my bus project and a uh, travel project. I might work on it some more this weekend um, and bring it with me to my partner's house. Um, and hopefully we'll get to see the um, piece come alive as I continue working on it. My other new start is, uh, like I was saying, Luna Moth from Wild Blue Belt Patterns. Um, I will put in a picture of the final um, pattern or mock-up here. Um, it's a really gorgeous pattern and I was actually, this was an, an, kind of an out of nowhere start for me. I got a really sweet message from one of my very good friends from undergrad who I also uh, lived with for three years in undergrad, Allie, and uh, she 
asked me if she could commission me to cross stitch her something and and she picked out this pattern we made some changes to it in terms of like her style and the color she liked um and things like that um, planned out the project together she's an architect so she has a lot of um she has a very good eye for design as well so it was kind of fun to to go through colors and make changes together um, and this is where I am on this so far. Allie, if you're watching and you don't want to see, um, probably skip ahead when I start talking about this pattern. But if you want an update on where I am, here it is. I am currently 583 stitches into this pattern out of a total of 3,600 stitches, which puts me at about 16% complete. It's honestly going faster than I expected. I started this on February 27th um, and I've only stitched on it for a total of, uh, let's see, three days so far. Um, so three days put me at 16%, which I don't think was too bad. And I'm also doing this one two over one full cross on 18 count. Um, and this is uh, Black Ada. I think it might be Zweigart, but I'm not sure. I just got it from Threadneedle Street, which is my LNS. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this one so far. Looking forward to working on it more. I don't really have a goal like I do for a lot of my whip go pieces on how um, how much progress I want to make on this over what period of time. Um, but I think I told Allie that I'd probably get it finished within a month or two, so general goal there. Um, and I'll be working on this one on and off um, over the next couple months. So those are my new starts, and I um, also had some progress on some whips from the end of February that I wanted to give you a final look at before I put them away until they're called on my whip go again. Um, so lately I've been showing unexpected visitors from Night Spirit Studios a lot. Um, I just uh, took this one out of the, the hoop that it was in and put it away um, because I don't know when it will be called next, so I don't know when I'll be working on it again. But here's where I got to from just working on it in February. Um, and I'll move it over a little bit so that I can also put in a picture of where it was in the last video when I showed it to you. I am 67% complete on this pattern. I'm doing it one over one full cross on 28 count natural linen with Threadworks flosses. And I started this one in on January 30th, 2023. And I have worked on it for a total of 27 days to get it to this point. I'm really happy with how this one is turning out. If you saw my video last week, I'm also doing a giveaway of this pattern and the supplies for it, and I'll be announcing the winner of that giveaway at the end of this video. Um, but for now, it's going back in, into the closet until it gets called again for Whipgo, um, because I just can't work on everything at once, unfortunately. And then the other pattern that I was working on last month for Whipgo was um, Heaven and Earth Designs Hidden Harbor, and I'm doing the color expansion. And this one, um, I will I'll put in that final picture of what the entire piece looks like, the mock-up of it at least. And then there's going to be lots of loose threads. You're just going to have to bear with me. Um, it's just my stitchy style, so um, hopefully it doesn't give you too much anxiety. So here's where I am on this one. I hit 10%, which was my goal for Whipgo on this piece for last month. And then I'll hold it over here so that you can also see the comparison to last time I showed it. Um, there probably isn't too much progress because I think I only did like under 1% since last time. I really love how the sky is turning out. Um, I think the colors are really, really gorgeous. Um, they're nice and bright, so it's like a fun, it's a fun piece to work on and there's lots of different colors that come up. Um, 
I started this piece. Sorry, it's kind of hard to like hold it up and show things. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, so I started this piece um, on January 2nd. It was like my new year, new start. It has a total of 135,150 stitches and I currently have completed 13,558, which puts me at 10.03%. So I'm glad that I'm staying on track with this one for my whip go goals. Um, I'm doing it two over one half stitch on 25 count easy count Lugana. And that has been really good for making a lot more progress than I ever could have if I was doing it in uh, full cross. So I'm really enjoying this piece, but it is going away for a little bit. I think it's good to take breaks from things like Hades. Um, I worked on this one pretty much all the way through January and February. And I think it's a good time to take a break so that I don't get burnt out on the piece because it is so big and I do love it and I don't want to get frustrated or tired of it um, in the process of working on it. Alrighty. Um, I think that's all of the stitching that I have to show you. I'll talk a little bit about plans now. So uh, as you may remember from my last video, my WIPGO, um, and I kind of already mentioned it already, my WIPGO uh, calls for this month are to get to 33% on Ocean Wave, which I just showed, um, and then also to get to 75% on this piece, which is called Elegant Lace by Works by ABC. Um, so here's where I am so far on it, and I'll put up a final, a picture of the final um, pattern as well. Um, it's a gorgeous piece. I love working on it. It's nice to work in one color sometimes, um, and I'm excited to get back to this, but I haven't touched it yet this month. Um, so uh, hopefully you'll see some progress in the next video. Hopefully I'll pick it up some this week. But I feel like I have lots and lots of stitching to do. Um... So I'll be working on Elegant Lace and uh, Ocean Wave, trying to hit those whip go goals, and then working on Luna Moth in the background um, for my friend. All right, so that kind of wraps up all the stitching things I, um, stitching progress that I wanted to share with you. Um, in terms of purchases, I mentioned last time that I got some Q-Snap extenders so that I could have a bigger frame for Hidden Harbor, and those finally came in from 123 Stitch. So I got the 17 inch um, extenders or replacements, I guess is maybe what they were called. Yeah, spare pair. So I got the 17 inch so that I could extend one of the sides of my 11 by 11 Q snap to 17. And then I also grabbed the 14 inch extension kit, which um, allows you to convert an 11 by 11 to a 14 by 14 square frame. So with all of these things in hand and the 11 by 11 that I already have, I should be able to make myself a 17 by 14 Q-snap, um, which will be perfect for Hidden Harbor because I think the finished size of it is something like 13 by 17. Um, and I really don't like clamping Q-snaps over my finished stitching, so I'd rather work in a really large Q-snap so that I don't have to do that. That's all the purchases for now, um, and I don't really have any major Q&A or life updates from last time. Um, I think now I will hop into the um, special segment that I have for this week, which is patterns that I own that I haven't stitched yet that are on my list to stitch next. Um, so I will switch you over to look at my computer screen and we will get started there. Alrighty, so now you should be able to see my screen which has a bunch of Etsy tabs open in it. So I figured I'd just pull up the Etsy listings for all of these patterns even though I already own them. Um, just so that if you were curious and wanted to purchase any of them, it'd be really easy for you to find all the information you need to look that up. So I do already own all of these. I'm not showing any patterns that I don't already own. Um, and what I typically try to do is I'll purchase patterns um, and I'll, I'll keep them all and I'll try to plan to stitch things that I already own rather than stitching things where I don't own the pattern yet. So if that holds true, which it doesn't always hold true, but if that holds true, then 
Um, these patterns are probably some of the next patterns that you'll see me start and finish on my channel in the coming months and years. The first is this uh, pattern from Lola Crow Cross Stitch, which is a cat sitting in a window, but out the window you can see Starry Night. Uh, Lola Crow has a ton of really cute patterns like this um, with cats sitting in windows and then some like um, scene outside. There's like some with like aliens and some with Bigfoot and stuff like that. They're all really fun and I like a lot of them, but this was my favorite, so I picked it up. Um, I also have the other three um, Aerial Ocean cross stitch um, patterns from Zephyr Mood. Um, these go with the Ocean Wave pattern that I was showing you earlier. Um, and I'm hoping to make it into a little um, kind of collection with all four of them. So here's one of the others. Um, here's the third one. And here's the final one. And I think those will look really cool all together. So I'm um, looking forward to stitching all of those pieces um, one day, but who knows when. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but my housemate's cat is trying to, to break into my room. Alrighty, and then we have some butterfly and moth patterns from Crystal Feather Crafts, um, which I am planning to stitch to put on my butterfly and moth wall once I get enough of them together. The first is this brown and yellow moth that I thought was really nice. Um, I like the color scheme a lot. It's simple, and I think it would go well with what I have stitched so far. Next is this turquoise and yellow one. I'm not sure if I'll keep the turquoise color on this or if I'll change it to a slightly different blue, um, but I liked this one a lot. And then we have this really cool butterfly. Um, I, I think the, the patterns on the wings on this one are really neat, so I'm, I'm excited to stitch that one. Again, I'm not sure if I'll make some maybe slight color changes on some of these patterns, um, but I guess you'll have to keep watching to find out. And then also I have this little beetle pattern that I thought was super cute. I love the colors on this one, the kind of like yellow, but then like also blues and greens that it has. I don't know that this will go on my butterfly and moth wall because I feel like it doesn't really match, even though it is like insect themed, I guess. Um, but what I'll probably do is just display this one somewhere else. So I really like this one and I think it's on my whip go for this year. So you might see this one actually be finished in the near future. Then we have a pattern from Vika Space. So this is one of those like satin stitch embroidery type pieces that I talk about occasionally. It's really the only type of embroidery that I do these days, but I do really enjoy it. And this pattern totally caught my eye when she um, first released it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the colors. It's Yosemite Valley. I'm from California, so it felt like, you know, a little bit um, personal to me. And I really want to stitch this one, but I want to do it justice. And um, I haven't quite figured out how big I want to make it yet. So this will hopefully happen eventually, but I have no idea when. And then we have a bunch, sorry about that, a bunch of the mini art cross stitch patterns from the stitch patterns and the stitch patterns was kind enough after they saw some of my videos and a lot of um, the patterns that I've already stitched from them to actually share their entire um, pattern collection with me and so I have access to all of their mini cross stitch patterns which is incredible I can only imagine like once I get through stitching like some of my favorites how gorgeous of a little like, tiny gallery wall of them I'll be able to make and so I pulled up here um, all of the ones that are like my top for stitching um, and putting on that wall. I think there's probably like 20 or more of them that I'm interested in, but I'll flip through those real quick. First one is um, Seascape Storm by Claude Monet. Then we have um, Cat Under a Tree by France Mark. We have um, the Eiffel Tower by, um, I can't, I can't pronounce all their names, but the Eiffel Tower, um, Two Calla Lilies by Georgia O'Keeffe, um, let's see, Red Boats, another Monet, 
feel like I have a lot of Monet and Van Gogh that I picked out. Like, here's a Van Gogh one. Um, let's see. Uh, I also picked out a lot of still lives and a lot of like florals that I really liked. Oh, Kingfisher by the Waterside, another Van Gogh. I thought this one was really neat. I liked the colors in it a lot. Um, Japanese Footbridge. I also have quite a few Matisse's in here. Um, fine Wind, Clear Morning, Gorgeous Pattern. Um, a Japanese artist. This one with the cat, a still life with the cat. I thought that was fun. Um, Girl with the pearl earring. Uh, these patterns I think are really cool. Like I, I love Mona Lisa, Girl with pearl earring and like some of the Frida Kahlo self portraits, but I think it's really hard to get some of their facial features to come across well in these really tiny patterns. So I'm thinking that I might like remove the eyes from all of these patterns um, and just like do a, a face with no eyes. I feel like that sounds kind of creepy, um, but I'll show you what I mean because I think their Mona Lisa pattern does that. So when that comes up, I'll explain a little more. Another Van Gogh, um, another Matisse. I love this painting. I actually um, recreated this painting when I was in middle school with pastels. It's like super janky. I was not good at using pastels, but I think my mom still has it hanging <laughs> in one of the like closets in her house or something like that. So here's the Frida Kahlo. This one I think the eyes are a little bit better on. Um, we have another still life. We have oh, The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali, Melting Clocks. I think that this representation is like so very, it so very captures like the essence of Dali paintings that come to mind for me. Uh, Soul of the Rose. Um, another floral still life. The Van Gogh chair, I love the colors in the, um, in some of Van Gogh's like chair and bedroom and aisles and, and things like that. Um, more floral still lives. Hopefully this isn't too boring. There's a lot of them. Uh, Monet windmill. Um, another, I want to say this is an O'Keefe, but I might be wrong. And then still life with fruit, poppies, more flowers, you sense a trend perhaps. Okay, so here's the Mona Lisa piece I was talking about. See, they just don't even put her eyes or many of her facial features, but you still get the point of the Mona Lisa across. And so I'm kind of, I'm considering when I do Mona Lisa, Girl with the Pearl Earring and Frida Kahlo to really just strip back the face and make it kind of like this where you get the es essence, but you're not trying to fit details into a pattern that's simply too small to fit that much detail in. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that because it would require me changing some of those other patterns, but I think it would turn out um, unique and very like kind of minimal and get the point of the piece across. There's um, the kiss. I love this painting. Uh, I think this little rendition is so cute. Again, the yellow really ca catches my eyes and things, which you might notice. Um, and then lastly, and their moment, Monet. So those are all of the mini art patterns that I'm really excited to stitch. I know it's a lot of them, um, but again, I put them in these tiny two by three frames and I think that like all hung together on a little wall it could be like a tiny museum art gallery and I think that would be super super cute. And then the last patterns that I have to show are a couple from Harp Seal Designs or Harp Seal Crafts. I'm actually not sure what the designer's name is. Let's see. Harp Seal Crafts. Okay, so this one is a crossover between two paintings, um, The Great Wave um, and Starry Night. I thought that was a really cool combination. So one day I'll stitch this. It is a lot of stitching and I haven't, I don't have any like plans for it yet, um, but I thought this was a neat pattern. So I wanted to pick it up. Another butterfly for my wall. Oops. <laughs> I feel like this, um, this is a bit of a wild ride through my internet browser. 
Um, I really love how bright green this butterfly is. I probably will not stitch, actually I definitely will not stitch this like wreath around it. I just got this pattern for the butterfly itself to go on my butterfly wall. And then, um, I'm so sorry for the chaos that is me clicking around in my browser. Um, Mushrooms at Night from Harp Seal Crafts. Um, I'm a big fan of a couple things that you might have noticed the trends of. Um, mini art patterns, butterflies, and mushrooms. <laughs> I'm getting into a lot of mushroom patterns. Like I did Mushrooms, um, Moonlight Mushrooms from Lola Crow. Um, I love that pattern. I think it's a gorgeous. It turned out so good. And there's a lot of other mushroom themed patterns that I'm interested in stitching. But anyway, that's all the patterns that I have purchased that I haven't stitched or started yet. Um, so I'll pop you back over to full screen. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that little trip through all of the patterns that I have purchased so far. Um, for next week's video, I want to show you patterns that I want to buy. I have a huge favorites list of patterns on Etsy and even just a list of patterns that like the designers don't sell their, their patterns through Etsy um, of things that I want to buy and I want to stitch. Like literally, I have probably over 100, maybe over 200 patterns um, collectively through there. I don't know if I'll even be able to do all of them in my lifetime, but I think it's fun to like see what other people um, are hoping to stitch um, before they actually start it. So I will be sharing those next week. Um, let me know if you like this segment and if you're excited to see that down below. I'm not really sure how popular it is, but I think I would really like to see it from other, um, from other floss tubers. And then uh, lastly, I want to announce the winner of the giveaway from last week. So this giveaway was for um, some of the floss, some of the Threadworks floss that I used for Unexpected Visitors and the Unexpected's, Unexpected Visitors pattern, um, both of which I will be sending to you. Um, I need to purchase a second copy of the Unexpected Visitors pattern. I haven't done that yet. But the winner of the giveaway, um, I used the YouTube random comment picker to search for everyone who left the word unexpected in my comments of the last video, and our winner is Rebecca Smith. So thank you so much to everybody who entered. I think there were like 24 entries. Um, I was surprised. That was way more than I was expecting. Um, and congrats, Rebecca. I will get this out to you as soon as I can, and I'll keep you updated on that process. Um, so thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week and sharing with you all of the hundreds of patterns that I hope to stitch someday in the future. Um, I'll catch you here next week. Bye!